MLS season kicks off in less than a month on February 21st. Um, we are going to be doing some in-depth season previews on every single club. Starting tomorrow, we'll focus on a team from the East and the West. Uh, but today, since we have Michael LaHood at the desk as well, we're going to do kind of a, a big picture season preview. Things that we are excited about, things we're looking forward to, teams that we're intrigued by, and uh, I'm going to kick us off. Are you ready to yeah, rock and roll? Let's, do it. let's go. Okay, so the team that I am most intrigued by based on what they have done in the offseason is the Colorado Rapids. Ooh. Yeah, Ooh. I know. The PIDs, up the PIDs. Uh, so they finished at the bottom of the Western Conference standings last year, uh, only five wins from 34 on the season and scoring goals was a was a real issue for them and so they got rid of Robin Frazier before the end of the season. Chris Armis was named the new head coach and this is an interesting hire because Chris Armis was under he's a, a Jesse Marsh protege if you will was with him at Red Bulls took over for him when he left um, got fired from that job went to TFC got fired from TFC and then went over to England and was an assistant to Ralph Rangnick at Manchester United and then went back to Leeds under Jesse Marsh. So he has this like this whole wealth of experience and I feel like Chris Armis is a manager who has a lot to prove. I think that he feels like he maybe got a little bit of short change that is during his time in, in MLS as a head coach with with the New York Red Bulls with Toronto FC. This is a chance for him to to kind of like show his his moxie. And he he knows the league very, very well as a player, as a coach. So I'm I feel like this is a guy who's incredibly motivated to turn this team what, around. What does he need to do? Colorado as a reminder, they were wooden spoon. They were the worst no, team in Major Toronto. League Soccer. Toronto. Toronto. All right. Was the, so the worst. in Western Conference, yes. Toronto got the wooden vape. <laughs> <laughs> so what's what's the what's the standard for him to show his moxie? So what's like where where do you want them to finish to be like okay? Great job done. Well, I mean, the good news in MLS is that a lot of teams now make <laughs> the playoffs. So it's not it's not out of the question for them to go it's, But from, it's a big jump. It's a big jump. I think if you look at the offseason moves, in addition to naming Chris Amaris as head coach, if you look at the, the offseason moves that they've they've made, mm -hmm. there's some really intriguing names on here. Um, Zach Steffen is a guy who, again, another guy who I think has a little bit of a chip on his shoulder and a lot to prove. Uh, Georgie Mihailovic is the one that that I am really, really excited about. A couple of years ago when he was with Montreal, CF Montreal, before he got injured, he was, he was an MVP caliber Lights player. Out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lights Absolutely out. Absolutely lights out. The way he was able to just kind of boss that midfield, he was the engine of that Montreal team under Wilfred Nancy, by the way, who was in, did an incredible job with that side. So the addition of Georgi Mihailovic, who went over to Azed Alkmaar, uh, didn't have a, a, I don't think he was getting that many minutes. I, I, I don't know that his time there went, went very well, but he's back in MLS where he ha is comfortable, where he knows the league, where he is successful. Um, I'm very interested to see how he and Cole Bassett can play together. Cole Bassett was Colorado's leading goal scorer mm -hmm. last year with, I think, six goals, five goals. I mean, that's not a lot. So the, I, I think that they are going to create some opportunities. My one question with, with Colorado is who's going to who's gonna be the nine, like who's going to actually be the goal scorer for them. So I think they've got some work to do in terms of figuring that out. But I like a lot of the pieces that they've put in place. And yeah. I think like a guy like Georgie Mihailovic can be a difference maker. What about Omir Fernandez, though? Also a, a player yes. who played under him at Red Bull. Yeah. Really smart to bring in a little bit of familiarity there. I, I, so then anything not playoffs, considering the hires? It's a complete failure if you don't make the playoffs, regardless oh, who you are. I think, okay, I was going to say underperform. I was going to go on and say complete failure, but... It's a complete failure. Okay. If you do not make the playoffs, you should be sacked as a manager. I think because and of what, 70% of the league gets in the playoffs? <laughs> because, because of the money that's being forked over by a club like Colorado that usually doesn't spend money at all, playoffs or your job is on the line with okay. this Chris Armas project. Yes, okay. 100%. Yeah. So, yeah, that's my most intriguing team. Nico, Nico uh, let me guess all the Argentinians in Miami. <laughs> I'm going to go to the opposite spectrum of to the, top. the league and say Cincinnati because they Ooh. had one Ooh. hell of a season where they were so good and it's how do you consistently stay there and they're gonna have a chip on their shoulder obviously supporter shield is very important but the public opinion doesn't value supporter shield like the team that wins supporter shield values it mm. uh, for us 
in the media, mm -hmm. for fans in general, MLS Cup is where it's at. Yeah. If I told you, pick one. <laughs> MLS Cup. Well, of course. Yeah. As, a, as a player now, a absolutely. which one do you want? But or do you win the MLS Cup and not win a supporter shield? Yeah, what, of course you would take it. So I'm just interested to see where, since how Cincinnati rebounds because they were mm. so they good. were so good. Pat Noonan, they he got this team team to click. They've lost Brandon Vasquez. Um, obviously, you have other ways of scoring goals. It's not like they were completely relying on Brandon Vasquez. You still have Upenza, but not only that, uh, Arias as well wasn't the all out and out right back for for um, Cincinnati they they had Powell but um, they reinforced with Miles Robinson that's where I'm just curious to see how Cincinnati can repeat a, a very and, very strong season Miles and Miaz get together it might be fun be, to that watch. could be yeah. and they that's that's the area where they were so improved yeah. too as well yeah. that back line um, was a really really good addition for them all right Michael LaHood you're up. Uh, I'm going from the Midwest to the Southeast. Mm. Orlando City, Florida. Ooh. We talk a lot about Inter Miami, so let's give the Purple Wave and the Purple Rain some love. I'm going that the Mauricio Pereira era has been ended. Nico Ladero era has begun. This is a player, Seattle, 80 assists in his MLS career. Let's start with that. Where he goes, he brings championships. CONCACAF Champions League brings that. MLS Cups brings that. And when you look at an Orlando City side that you lose a playmaker in Pereira, 12 assists last season, you need to at least bring some player who's going to match that and take it to another level. The big concern, though, is what happens with Duncan McGuire, mm -hmm. linked to Brackford Rovers, as at 2.3 million pounds is the fee that they're close to maybe signing that deal. If you lose that player, that is a striker that could be and probably will be the lead striker for the Olympic team in Paris this summer. But he is a kid that I love the edge he plays with. And Blackburn Rovers, if they get him, they'll be getting a player who fits their model, could save them in the championship. They're going to definitely need that. But Nico Lodero, you put him in there with Facundo Torres, who had 14 goals last season. Ivan Angulo is a mm. baller, the Colombian. I love him. Speed kills. Already scored against Flamengo. Guess who assisted? Nico Lodero mm. in that preseason friendly. So you keep that front three together, they're going to be cooking. Do you think they're going to be contenders in the East again? They finished second Absolutely. last year. Yeah. Absolutely. Even if Duncan it's, McGuire leaves. If, if Duncan McGuire leaves, then that is a world of hurt. Okay. That puts him back. You're going to have to recycle a bit. If they keep Duncan McGuire, you're talking about a team that could take that next step in the playoffs. They have the manager retaining Oscar Padeja. That's that huge. was the biggest contract negotiation biggest thing Huge. to get him back you add the championship experience of Lodero that's the sort of player that takes you over the edge very intriguing Oof. Alexis a lot of a lot what of old got? knees in Miami and uh, Orlando <laughs> huh? there's a real retirement uh, Southern Florida um, I'm gonna go I'm also gonna bring up Southern Florida but more in an overall aspect I'm not gonna speak specifically about a team but I want to see what the messy effect has on everyone else within the league mm. we've already heard Kansas City, right? Sporting Kansas City, they've moved the, the game against Inter Miami out of their home stadium to uh, Arrowhead Park, GEHC Park at Arrowhead Park, whatever you guys are calling it now. At, uh, to Taylor the, Swift uh, Park? Yeah, the, yeah basically. <laughs> to the NFL stadium. The only, uh, I found this out from our producer, the only video billboard in all of Stanford has an ad for the match. Sorry, Bristol, Connecticut has an, an ad for their match against uh, Inter Miami's match against New England Revolution. We're starting to see with the messy effect. What I want to see is what does the rest of the league do with this newfound, you know, messy effect? Do, you, do we start to see teams catch up? Do we start to see teams spend money? Do we start to see the, the league open up the purse strings a little bit? Do we start to see the ability to build a team that some of these owners clearly want to build and start to level up so that when Messi walks out of this, this uh, league, we're at a point where we're not necessarily looking for the next big thing to sell tickets. Can I see some of these teams level up? And how are some of these teams going to handle Kevin Messi? Are you going to try to compete against him, or are you just going to use this as an opportunity to make as much money as possible? What's actually going to happen mm. now that we know Messi's here? What's really going to happen? Five DPs. <laughs> <laughs> how about this? <laughs> 11 DPs. Can we just <laughs> get rid of the cap? <laughs> get rid of the cap. How about this? No cap, luxury tax. Oh. Some teams will pay it. Yeah, we're a single entity, and ratings don't matter anymore. You're behind a paywall. Get Donnie. God. Pick. Commissioner. Make some calls. Call Commissioner. Commissioner like Guerrero. Alexis huh? has got Commissioner some ideas. If I know where Geo's going, I know how to save the league. 